I discovered records and LPs when I was a child, living with my grandmother in the heart of the Navajo Reservation. She had this old record player, kind of like a big old cabinet type, and she had stacks and stacks of all these records from Johnny Cash to Willie Nelson, Waylon, Elvis Presley, Loretta Lynn, you know, Frank Sinatra even. And uh, I spent a lot of time alone and I would spin these records over and over again. But there's one record in particular, which is Johnny Cash's Live at uh, San Quentin that had the boy named Sue on it. When I found that, I would listen to that thing over and over again. And as a kid, I understood that this was adult music with adult content, but something in the voice of Johnny Cash painted this grand picture, this epic tale of all these songs that he sang, songs like my boy named Sue, Ghost Rash in the Sky. And at that time, at that point in my life, I understood the power of music. That you could write something that could move a person so much that it could change your lives or personality. Like the saying goes, when you look into the abyss, you must be careful because the abyss looks back into you. That's how songwriting is. You lose yourself in your craft and you got to. You gotta lose yourself in it, do your best. And hopefully you come back out a different person, whole, but a different person. I grew up uh, traditionally in the Navajo culture, you know, my grandmother and everybody who raised me, my mother, my aunts, my uncles, they all raised me around the traditional aspect of our culture. We weren't into that the Native American church or the powwow. We weren't into that. So they raised me the hard way, man, you know. You know, my first album was called Dirt Dance Floor for a reason. That's where I came from, living on a dirt ground. All our ceremonies and that whole ceremonies are done on a dirt floor. And that's why my first album is called Dirt Dance Floor, to uh, pay homage to where I come from. You know, playing live, you know, live shows is just as addictive as anything else, because you get addicted to that feeling that rush of the crowd singing with you, shouting your name, clapping their hands. And that's what, as a performer, that's what you want. Because, you know, if they ain't feeling you, then, what, then what's, what's the purpose of doing what you're doing? An artist has to draw from what they know, you know, personal experiences. And uh, for me, it's mainly from the bad. The bad things I've done, the bad things have been done to me, and the bad things I've seen. And it's easy for me to reflect upon that for reasons beyond my comprehension. You know, an artist is given a craft, a talent, without ever really knowing why. And it's a curse and a blessing in itself because it kind of defines your existence. Yet it also makes it ambiguous, a mystery. Why are you here? Why do you write these songs? Why do you paint? And that's a struggle of every person. You know, that's why people love art. Because it's a struggle between who you are and who you're meant to be. And that's why songwriting to me is very important. That's why it's important for me to sing about things or write about things that are real. 
and not just take things on the surface, you know? It's gotta have a deeper meaning for me to sing about something or to read somebody else's writing or sing somebody else's song. If there's no heart and soul in it, then it's just a face. And that's something I just don't wanna do.